Today's video is going to go over the next steps for our pinch pots. So we created one that has a foot, we have one that has textures and our carvings, and we added parts to turn one into something else. Now the next decision I need to make is we're going to use one of these pinch pots to practice using the underglaze. Underglaze is a type of glaze that can be applied before the first firing. The first firing is the bisque fire. This will be an option for you later on in the quarter, which is why we're doing it. There's no law or rule that says a pinch pot has to be underglazed. This is just a good way with our three pots for us to figure out how to use this type of glaze. So you're going to select at least one of your pinch pots. And I recommend if you have delicate parts, like this one here has a real delicate piece that's its nose and the eyeballs that I added, that's probably not a good option for the underglaze. It can be easily broken off, and since these are bone dry, I'm not familiar of working with bone dry pieces just yet, I probably would set this one aside and get that one ready for firing. So then that leaves me with my other two pots. So I could definitely do the deep one with underglaze. There's nothing that says it would be good or bad to do that one. Um, and then I have the one with textures and our carvings. So I would recommend if you have something with a lot of details that you want to do, the underglaze might be better for detailed areas. Um, but ultimately that choice is up to you. So we are going to use the underglazes for one pinch pot. If you want to do two, that's okay, uh, but you must use the regular glossy glazes on one of the other ones. So that way we're practicing with both types of glazes we'll have this quarter. So I'm going to pick my shallow one because I made a textured design on it and I want that design to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to set my deep pinch pot aside as well. Okay. So because the underglazes come in a bottle like this or they might come in a jar, they're a community item and so if you're going to use them you'll need to either wash your hands or sanitize before uh, or if you would be more comfortable you can wear a pair of gloves or you could also use the sanitizing wipes to sanitize the bottles and lids uh, before you use it but it's always good to double check there's two different brands of underglazes this is just one but somewhere on the bottle it's going to say underglaze okay so regardless of what style of bottle you pick you just want to make sure that it says underglaze. Now, if you're an online only student, you're going to be getting up the cup of a color that you requested. So I have plastic cups and containers in the underglaze cabinet as well, and I can place those out. So that way we have less community touching of um, the underglaze bottles. But before I open this, actually, I should shake it and it's liquidy. I don't feel any big globs glunking down to one side or the other. And so now I can open it. And then sometimes, depending upon how long the underglaze has been around, there might be a little glaze at the top. So I'm just going to use one of my brushes, and I'm just going to kind of poke just to make sure that it's not solid. Okay. If I have a paper towel, I can wipe it on my paper towel. And then I'm going to squeeze a little bit of the underglaze in the cup. Now, you can use it directly from the bottle. However, because they're a community item, it might be better for you to put your glaze into a cup, and then that's your cup of glaze to hold on to. And then you could also label the lid. That would be a good idea so that you know it's underglaze. So this is not going to be a glossy glaze, meaning there's going to be two steps. So this is step one application of the glaze before the bisque firing. Okay, And I'm going to use my medium sized or larger sized square brush and that's personal preference. You can play around a little bit if you like the round brush. Um, I like the round brush for different things but since I'm going to basically put this glaze all over first I'm going to use a little bit bigger brush, but not the biggest brush that I have. So that's up to you. So I'm just going to start in one spot and start brushing. And it's a good idea if you can to try to go one direction. You don't want to do what's called over brushing where you just brush back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. That's going to push the glaze to one area. So if you can kind of go one direction, 
And you can see that this glaze dries pretty fast. Goes on a lighter color, or goes on a darker color and comes out a lighter color. So that's drying really pretty fast right before our eyes. Um, and then I'm going to do my edge as well. So you're probably like, why are you doing the whole pot one color? Um, I'm doing that as a base. So this is my base color. I want it to be blue, mostly blue. But I'm also going to use white as well. So I'm using this as my base. Okay. And when you use under glazes, you want to make sure that you don't overbrush, and then you also want to let it dry in between your layers. Um, it's better to only brush this type of glaze on, and you're going to apply three layers. So it might take a moment or two for that first layer to dry, and then you can go ahead. It's always good to kind of start in a spot that you know you started. So if there's a mark or a design that you can use as a guide, that's going to help you um, know where you started your layers at. And I don't want to get this on too thick. I don't want to glob it on. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm brushing it out, but I'm not trying to over brush it a bunch of times. And then I'm going to go to my top edge. And then the real key is to let it dry between your coats. You don't want it to um, be really wet when you go to put your next layer or next coat of glaze on because that's going to also push the glaze to that spot and so it could make it really streaky or it can make it very thin. So I'm just working on the top part of my pinch pot. The one thing about under glazes, it's not glossy because it doesn't contain any silica and that silica is really just glass and that's what makes our glazes glossy. So this is going to come back rough and dull for step one from the bisque fire. Then we'll put a clear coat on it. So right now, this glaze or the underglaze can be applied anywhere on the piece of pottery. So I'm just about dry. That was layer two. And I'm going to come in with my brush, dip it in, brush it around. And if you get some bristles to fall off your brushes, they're new, that's not uncommon for that to happen, um, but they're gonna burn off in the firing. So you don't have to worry about those bristles or trying to pick them off. That can be kind of frustrating if you do that, but they should burn off just fine in the firing and they shouldn't leave any type of mark in the glaze. Uh, the hair is fine enough that it should fire away and not have any issue. So there is my third layer. Now, at school, if you get glaze on the canvas, you can use your damp sponge to wipe that up and then rinse it out. But it might be a good idea to put a piece of newspaper down, uh, or if you wanted to, you could use a piece of paper towel. That just makes cleanup a little bit easier. I anticipate not being super messy, so I didn't, uh, but it would probably be a good idea if you did or even if I did. So now I'm going to do the back side. I'm going to do my edge first. And I'm just, you know, trying to go one direction, back one time, really, but not back and forth a whole bunch of times. And you do have to pay a little bit of attention to when you're glazing, whether it's under glaze or regular glossy glaze. Uh, that way you don't get the glaze too thick. It doesn't get globbed on. And with the under glaze, it doesn't matter where I put it. It's not going to stick to the kiln shelf. And so I can put this on the bottom of my pot. And so that means the bottom of the foot. I want to try to make to use nice long brush strokes. Try not to overbrush the area too much. And you can see that first layer usually dries pretty quickly. Now if you miss a spot, you know, definitely go in and, and get that glaze in there. Don't just leave it bare because this glaze isn't one that melts or runs. So if you have bare spots or clay showing, that is always going to show. So you want to try to get your glazing as even and consistent as possible. It takes a little bit of practice. So there's layer one. And it's mostly dry over here. So I'm going to use my initial in my name. So this is the A. That's my starting point. So that's where I started. And then that way when I rotate to do this ridge or the ledge around the outside, I know where I started at and I know I'm on layer two. If you have to make a tally mark or you have to write it down so you don't forget, 
do that. But I can't necessarily tell you if you put enough glaze on. You have to keep track. So I'm getting close to the top of my A. All right, so that should be two good layers around the edge. And then I'm going to start on this side of the A. So now I know where I started. Also, I have my finger on that side too. And then that way I can keep a good idea of where I need to glaze yet. Otherwise, it's pretty darn easy to forget as you're going around what number you're on for layers and maybe even where you started. Trying to use those nice wide brush strokes, nice long brush strokes. Try not to go back and forth too much. And this stuff really does dry pretty quickly. I mean, it's already almost dry on that one side. But usually by the second layer, it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I'm just going to set my pinch pot down while it does finish drying. So with the first uh, firing, the bisque fire, the underglaze can go in. And it's not going to stick to the kiln shelf. And it's going to come out rough and dull and a little bit darker. But it's not going to be the true color of the underglaze until part two. And that's going to be when we put the clear glaze on for the glaze fire. So it gets a little confusing for students because this goes under the clear glaze. That's why it's an under glaze. So it's still creating color for your piece of pottery, but when you apply it is different than most regular glossy glazes. The clear coat is a regular glossy glaze, meaning it's going to come out clear. You can see through it, even though it's going to look green or blue in the jug and you are going to be able to use your pottery piece or wash it. And then that glaze does contain silica. That's what makes it glossy. So we won't be able to put it on the bottom of our pinch pot, but that won't be a big deal because there already will be some blue color below, so it'll look finished. So that's one nice thing about our underglazes is that you can basically put it anywhere on the pot. So for another example, if you made a lid, you can put it in between where the lid sits on the pot and on the pot itself and on the bottom of the lid itself. Okay. So now I have my third coat on the bottom and my pinch pot currently is all blue. Now there are definitely some clay spots that are showing through the textured part. If I wanted this to truly all be blue, I would need to go back in and fill those in. Maybe a smaller brush. Maybe it just would require me not to brush so quickly. So I have a bowl of water off to the side of my screen and I'm going to rinse my brush in that. So if you have a bowl at home, there's cups in the classroom that you can use. Um, but you do want to rinse the glazes out of your brushes. You don't really want to let them sit in there. Uh, if they dry, you, you can go back later and wash it, but it's just easier. So now that I've finished using this glaze, it's going to be pretty hard to get it back into the bottle. And it's a community thing. So at this point, I would recommend that you grab yourself a lid from the cabinet as well. And now you have extra underglaze, and you can keep that in your cubby or in your toolkit. Either way is good. Or if you're at home, you know, you might just put a label on it, or you might use a marker and write underglaze so that you know what color it is. Um, it's a blue. It's pretty much going to look like this color when it's fired. So I kind of know that already. I can set that aside. So I don't have to just use one color of underglaze. I can use multicolors. And so I'm going to use blue and white, and I'm going to shake my underglaze jar. I can hear it swishing back and forth. I know that it's still liquidy. And I'm going to dump a little bit into my cup. It's better to not have too much glaze, just in case you don't ever come back to using it again. And then that way I don't have to sanitize all the cups before I put them in the extras cabinet at the end of the quarter. You want to make sure that you return the lids to the top of the jars. So sometimes if your underglaze just seems like it's really super thick, you could add a small amount of water, but this kind of has the consistency of pudding. But once you put the brush into it, it moves pretty easy. So I'm using my smallest brush that I have, and it is the round bristled brush. And I am going to put my white color into that band that I carved. So the nice thing about underglazes is that they're great for details. That's one of the biggest reasons why we would use this glaze is because you want to be able to put detailed designs or patterns 
or you want to be able to control the color. And what I mean by that is that they're not going to run together. What I'm painting is pretty much how it's going to look. Then it'll be fired. The underglaze will become permanent. Then it will come back from the bisque firing. I will apply a clear glossy glaze and then it'll go into the glaze fire and that will make these colors bright and shiny. So for now, I can just paint right over my base color. This makes life a lot easier, so I'm not trying to avoid all the little spots or places to um, put the glaze. That could be a little tricky with textured areas or carvings that you put in, but this way you don't have to paint around everything. So I did one layer and I need three. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna move into the middle of the pot and put in some of my white color. And I kind of like to do everything at one time so I know what layer I'm on, uh, so I can help keep track of what coat it is. And I'm not globbing this in. You know, you want to brush it in so it goes in there. Uh, if it's really, really thick glaze, you might need a little bit of water to thin this out, but not too much. We wouldn't want to make it too thin. Then it'll be streaky. It might not look nice overall. Okay. So I'm going to let that continue to dry, but that's coat one. And then if I wanted to, I could go back into my textures. And this takes a little bit of time because I have to do this three times. That's why I painted my base. That went really fast. So I just did the solid coating instead of trying to go in between all of these lines that I have. And let's say I didn't put three layers on. Your glaze is going to be thin. Let's say you only put two layers on. Your glaze is going to be streaky. If you put three layers on, it should be a good thickness. It should be pretty even. It shouldn't be too streaky. It should be a solid coverage. Now if you put more coats on, what could happen is that your glaze could chip off. So a lot of things with ceramics is about balance. Things can't be too thick. Things can't be too thin. And that means having to pay attention to how many layers you're putting on. Did you shake the glaze? Did you check the glaze consistency before you use it? And these are things that you have to remember to do to help just make sure that you have a piece of pottery that turns out nice. Uh, we don't have a lot of time in the quarter really because of the schedule. So we don't have a lot of time to touch up and redo things or refire them a bunch of times. But it is possible to touch up under glaze and send it back through a bisque fire. But then that means you're waiting for your pottery piece longer. It is possible um, to touch up clear glaze if you get it too thin when that time comes. And it is possible to touch up the regular glossy glazes. But the more we could just do it the first time around, the better turnaround time we'll have for the course of the quarter. So there's layer number one. Okay, so I'm going to continue to do that two more times. And then once I have my third layer on, this pot is ready to go into the bisque fire. So even though it has color on it, it'll be ready to be glaze or bisque fired, and then it will be ready to be glaze fired. So I'm going to put my piece that I turned into something else. I'm going to put my deep pot with the foot on it, and I'm going to send my one colored pinch pot that I have with the underglaze to the bisque fire. And Miss White will show you where the bisque fire shelf is in the classroom. If you're an online only studio, student, you'll be dropping them off to the studio and then you'll be picking them back up for glaze fire. So that's just a little bit more about under glazes uh, and hopefully that helps you as you begin to finish your pinch pots. Now remember you have to do one but if you want to do like your deep one and do a painted design on top of it you can use more than one color. You can use multiple colors. Oh, just make sure you do like a base first and then paint on top. Otherwise, it's just a lot more time consuming of a process for you to paint around any designs. And even though I only showed you one layer in the video today, I would still have to go in and paint two more layers before this pinch pot was 100% finished.